14 in less than two hours, candidates are crossed. The state of Louisiana will begin filing for the fall elections. Karen Swenson talked with our Clancy Dubos about what he expects in some of the major races. Qualifying begins today for candidates running in the fall elections and joining us now with the preview of some of the bigger races to watch is Eyewitness News political analyst and Gambit columnist Clancy Dubos. Good morning, Clancy. Good morning to you, Karen. So let's talk about some of the bigger races you're going to be watching this fall. Well, of course, everybody's going to watch the presidential race, but here in Louisiana, we have a number of marquee races. We have a U.S. Senate race with uh, U.S. Senator uh, Cassidy running for his first reelection. We have a red hot district attorney's race in Orleans Parish. We still don't know whether uh, 12 year incumbent Leon Canizero is running for reelection. He has played his cards very close to the vest. He hasn't announced and now qualifying is starting. But even without him announcing one way or the other, we already have a crowded race with several candidates already announcing. We have all, I think, seven seats on the school board or eight seats on the school board up for election. Uh, we have a race for state Supreme Court because Chief Justice Burnett Johnson is retiring, having reached the mandatory retirement age. Uh, every district court judge, every trial court judge, every district attorney, constables, justice of the peace, appellate court judges, all six Congress members, it's going to be a crowded ballot. Yeah, I was just thinking that. We're going to have a lot to study up on. In the meantime, you did mention Leon Canizero. What do you think he's going to do? Well, based upon what he's done, more like what he's not done, he hasn't announced. And, you know, if you're an incumbent, you've been there 12 years, you want to let people know you're running. The fact that he has not said he's running and not given any indications, not had fundraising uh, activities in the last you know, months, even before COVID, suggests to me very strongly that he is not going to run. He's also weakened because of the controversies over fake subpoenas and uh, putting uh, material witnesses in protective custody, which in effect arrest them to uh, help them or compel them to testify. Those things cause a great deal of controversy and frankly hurt his standing in the polls for the last two years to the point where today I saw a recent poll taken by a very reputable pollster that showed him having the support, the, his hard base of support was less than one third of the voters and in head to head races, he was losing to every one of his major challengers. All right, and so who now, would you get? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, so, well, I think you're gonna ask me who would be the favorite. I don't think there's a favorite just yet but as they break out of the gate, so to speak, the front runner appears to be city council president, Jason Williams, but be mostly because he's the best known. He's been on TV a lot as a council member, but the other candidates who have announced, uh, former judge Keeble Landrum and former judge Arthur Hunter, they may not be household names because judges can't go on TV like city council members can, but Williams is hobbled as well as Canizero because he'd just been indicted less than a month ago by the feds on income tax fraud and conspiracy charges. So he's going to now be the center of attention. Had Canizero, if Canizero runs, both of them would be the recipient of attacks. But with Canizero out of the race, if he is not running, and we'll know by 4.30 Friday, but if Canizero doesn't run, then all of the other challengers will focus their attention and their fire on Jason Williams, and that's okay. going to make him a very big target. Are there any other sitting incumbents who might be in trouble? You know, it's hard to predict in Louisiana. If someone gets in, say, the race for public service commissioner, I didn't mention that, but uh, Eric Skermetta, who is a two-term public service commissioner, is up for re-election. I haven't heard anybody running against him, but somebody you know, could always jump in. Uh, races for public service commissioner are always heated. Uh, there's going to be an interesting race for state Supreme Court. You'll have several judges from Orleans Parish running in that. And you never know what might happen in a congressional race. I think both of the local incumbents, Steve Scalise and Cedric Richmond, are pretty safe. But, you know, somebody with money can always get in. And with COVID uh, placing all sorts of challenges on candidates on how they raise money and how they campaign, I don't think anybody's safe until well, November 3rd. And it'll, we're running out of time, but it will be interesting to see how campaigning is different in the midst of a, a pandemic. You're not going to have a lot of door-to-door -door people going. So it's going to be really interesting, right? It's going to be very difficult for candidates to talk to large groups of voters in person. So it's going to place a lot more emphasis on media, social media, traditional media, television, newspapers, and 
even direct mail. All right, and the qualifying is going to end on Friday afternoon, right? Friday evening? Friday at 4.30. All right, Clancy, you're the best. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Karen. And coming up tomorrow, Clancy will be part of a special program here on Channel 4. We'll bring you more of his interview with former New Orleans Mayor Moon Landrieu. Landrieu is turning 90 years old tomorrow, and we'll look back on his two terms as mayor, as well as on the advice he gave his children, who of course followed him into politics. I know that I had to tell him that it's difficult, running is difficult, and you have to be able to withstand the trauma of a loss. And we'll have that special program, Moon at 90. Landrew looks back tomorrow at 6.30 right here on Channel 4.